Um, can you talk about the quarterback's responsibility in the run game that you're not just a guy that's going to throw it all the time? Yeah, I think they um, they put a little bit on our plate uh, as far as in the run game, making sure we get to the correct run. Um, you know, if we have a run up and it's, you know, running into a bad look, making sure we either change it from a, a run play to a pass play or, or change it to a different run. So there is, you know, a little bit – a little bit going on uh, mentally up there for us. Yeah, deep into the strategy. What, what's your guys' secret to winning the coin toss as much as you have? Man, you shouldn't ask that question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I actually thought about that uh, in the you know when we won it again. I think we've only lost one coin toss, um, but it's uh, it's nice to be able to have our defense go out there and and get a stop and give us some good field position. Jack, given your uh, experience with Jeff at Purdue, are you a little bit, or were you, or are you a little bit surprised about the emphasis on the run as much? Um, yeah, obviously it's been it's been a lot different for me. I've never had to play the quarterback position like this before. I've always kind of been throwing the ball a ton of times in the game, but hey, it's it's what we're doing. It's what we're working with. I think. It's a credit to coach understanding, you know, what we're good at and what we're doing. And he's not one of those guys that says, "Hey, this is what we do. This is, this is how we're going to do it." He's going to adapt to uh, his players and and you know what's been going well for us this year. And obviously, the last two games we've been running the ball really well. But um, I think that goes to show we practice so many things in the spring, in the summer, in the fall that we have all these in, in our bag to be able to to pull out and use. So. Um, it is a little bit different. Uh, kind of never expected to go into a, a game under Coach Brom and only throw it 12 times, but uh, but that's where we're at. Jack, we're, we're used to seeing teams, you know, at the beginning of the fourth quarter hold up a four, everybody hold up the four or something. That seems kind of standard. You guys are kind of taking it to another level. What, what, <laughs> what are you doing when that's all going on? And, uh, you know, so there's some coaches getting into it too. Yeah, obviously, I think especially at home with the with the Joker and the Thief, I think that gets the guys really going, and uh, the O line has you know started to. I don't even know if they choreographed that or how they did that, but it looks pretty good. And I think it's just it gets the guys excited, it gets us going, and gets the crowd into it. I think uh, we feed off the crowd's energy, so I think it's been really good for us. Me personally, I'm just kind of jamming along with it. I'm not a uh, as musically inclined as some of these O linemen, um, but yeah, I just I try to go out there and just—it's a good time with uh, with your teammates and stuff too. So, Jack, following the Virginia Tech game, Jeff said it was talking about how Brian Hudson's been dealing with some injuries, hasn't been practicing much, and said you basically have to amputate his leg to get him out of there. What does that type of leadership and his performance without practicing all week mean to the offensive line as well as the team? Yeah, I think you know with Brian going through some stuff, he. He gets a lot of mental reps during the week, and it's a credit to the coaches and the rest of the O linemen up there, knowing that he's going to put in the time, you know, not just on the practice field, but he's going to put in the time in the meeting rooms, um, staying after and watching the film, making sure he knows exactly what what to do before he gets out there with the limited reps he gets. And I think it goes to show how tough he is. And uh, we got other guys on the team too that I think are are pretty tough individuals, and they're they're dealing with some stuff that probably maybe isn't public that. Um, and then go out there on Saturdays and play in the game. So I think it's a credit to this team and the culture that we have here. A burning question on people's minds, the, the mustache is back. And, uh, I, I mean, I don't even know how to phrase this question. Like, well, what goes behind keeping it or shaving it? Like, are you going to keep it? What's going on? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I'm just going out here and I'm playing football. Um, I'm just trying to go out there, do my job, and um, adapt to to what's going on out there, and throw the ball to open receivers. Jack, the the, the crowd, the home field advantage, um, it gets loud. There's times when you're asking when you're asking them to quiet down. Can you just kind of talk about? I mean, how loud is it? What what's that like? And is it you know what's the advantage? Yeah, I think. Um, the crowd does get loud. And it helps our defense I, noticeably for me. I, I mean, you probably ask Ben, but um, noticeably I see us feed off of that. And now when we're on offense, I would like them to be quiet. Uh, 
I think they just get excited. Sometimes we get a turnover, they're still cheering. They get excited. Um, but we got to be able to hear the snap count. Uh, we got to use the crowd to our advantage and not let let them get an advantage. But it just goes to, to show the excitement that's behind all the fans, and um, we see that and we really appreciate that. We've also we've we've talked a lot about the running game and how people we don't expect it from Coach Brom's offense. The two things we talked about at the beginning of the year were passing and trick plays. You haven't had to use a lot of those trick plays. I know you still practice them. Are you like, come on, we got to use one of these, Coach, or is it nice not to really have to kind of dip into the bag and, and you've got a lot of things left? Um, yeah, we've we still got the trick plays up. I think we have ran more than uh, people. I mean, we've ran a couple already. I mean, Coach usually dials up one or two a game, but I think uh, we've kind of held back a little bit just with playing with some leads, um, making the play calls not – so aggressive where there's a higher chance of something going wrong, a negative play. Um, but, it, you know, we still got them, and I think uh, it's good that we haven't shown all the ones that we've used to. With with all your experience, what, what can it do for a player like Isaac? He talked about a little after the game the other day, like, you know, he's just waiting for that moment. What can it do for him to have a game like that for his confidence moving forward? I think it uh, – I don't want to speak for Isaac, but I think it could help him for sure. Um I think we all knew in the program that he's capable of doing that. And so to see him go out there and, and do that was uh, special. And, and even Maurice, too, Maurice Turner, is, he's a special player and he's going to be a really good player for this program. And he's got all that capability as well. So just making sure that all those guys are ready and they understand that. And that's probably one of our better groups on the team is the running back group. So uh, it's definitely good for him. And I think uh, it kind of put – kind of showed the fans what what he's about and – um, but, yeah, I'm happy for him, and he did a really good job on Saturday. For both of you guys, I mean, you talked about the, the joker and the thief, the home field advantage. Um, but I guess just percentage-wise or whatever, what allows you guys to play so strong at home? Because you have played, it seems like, a lot better at home than on the road. Yeah, uh, just going back to what I said with, with the crowd, with us feeding off that, um, being able to make it hard on the opposing offenses and then allowing our defense to go out there and play and then giving us good field position to work with makes it easier. So I think we've been playing good complimentary football at home and we're just going to have to keep building on that going forward. Yeah, kind of piggyback off of Jack. I think having that home field advantage and having the crowd noise involved too, that kind of play a big role into like messing up this offensive snap counts. You see a couple of times we get like them to jump fall start a couple of times too. So just having a crowd there, big crowd, um, playing complimentary football, like he said, goes into that. I guess just kind of following up, Jack, what were your first impressions when you heard the Joker and the Thief in that first kind of setting? Someone had told me uh, about it. I never saw a video or um, really experienced it. just told me what the song was. But just to – was the first game against Murray was cool to – to see everyone get out, get on their feet, and um, get out there and start dancing and and playing along with the the, ins- the air instruments, um, but yeah, it was, it's something cool. And people have told me like when they come to the games, like my family and friends have always said like, oh, that's that was like one of my favorite parts of the game, like just seeing that and how um, involved the players are into it, and then as well as everyone in the stands on their feet and. Uh, it's definitely uh, something that's really cool. Ben, there's certainly scheme and control it, to the defense, but also there's kind of a madness to it. You guys just seem to be playing like crazed lunatics out there, the pursuit to the football, all that kind of stuff. Is that just sort of developed with what's happening, or have you guys made an intentional effort to do exactly that? I think it's really the intentional effort. Coach Inglis always talks about with us about getting to the ball. Like, you know, it's the one thing to run to the ball, but it's another thing to get to get to the ball and, like, put your face on the ball, you know, all that stuff. So I think it's very implemented in practice that we get to the ball, we run to the ball, and, you know, getting to the ball kind of, like, just cleans up mistakes too. So, you know, guys may be misfitting a couple of times here and there, but, like, since all of us are putting in effort, putting that uh, get ten hats into the frame mentality, you know, it kind of cleans up a lot of stuff. guys uh, defensively because there's so many bodies there's so many guys 
especially on the defensive line, but even, you know, for you guys with Antonio and you battling, when you're in there, do you almost feel like you got to make a play because somebody else is going to come in? I mean, you got to take advantage of every opportunity. Um, with the coaching staff here, they preach too deep. Everybody got to be ready to play. So I think they heavily emphasize in, you know, getting players ready. And, you know, having Watts, a young guy right behind me who's a great player, uh, you know, him getting reps, you know, stuff like that, it kind of – Keeps me ready, keeps me prepared. You know, I can always take mental reps when he's in the game too. So, you know, the biggest thing is a lot of us are healthy because we have two deep players and, you know, we can always rotate and stuff. So I don't feel like it's any really competition. That, like I need to make a play or I need to do this. I just need to do my job, you know, the best of my ability. And, you know, if a play come my way, then it's time to make it. Kind of, I got one. Been kind of piggybacking off that question. Um, how much of a luxury is it and how much confidence do you guys take in the fact that this defense isn't reliant on one player, you know, like one leading tackler or whatever to, to be that guy when you need it to make the play? Um, it's kind of a good thing. It's kind of fun. You know, they gave the coaches leeway to scheme up, you know, blitzes for different players and different packages because they know we can all make plays. So, the biggest thing for us is just to go out there, have fun with each other, you know, love on each other. When somebody else make a play, you know, tap the hat, you know, get to get to celebrating with each other. And for the most part, it's just been fun. Like, you know, it's been fun to learn. It's been fun to play. It's been fun to just be out there with each other as a defense and just put on our best show. Thank you. <laughs>